Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationblog.com and in this episode of the Automation Minute, I'm going to show you how to set up communications to a Micrologix 1000. Now, before we start, I want to say that in previous episodes, we already took a look at the hardware that makes up the Micrologix 1000, where the port is, where the indicator lights are, and all of that. We also already talked about what software we need to use and how to get these low-cost third-party cables if you don't have the expensive Rockwell cable. So all of that's already been covered. Check out those episodes if you missed them. But uh, with that done, let's go ahead and actually set up communications to our Micrologix 1000. Okay, the first thing we need to do is figure out what the COM port is of our USB to serial converter. So I'm going to go to Device Manager here and go into Ports, and we can see my key span is COM port 3. All right, with that knowledge in hand, let's go ahead and open up RS Link's Classic Lite. And I'll double click on that and maximize it. And the first step we need to do is open up Configure Drivers. Okay, and here we're going to choose an RS-232 DF1 device. Add New. We're going to accept the default name, click OK. And here I'm going to select COM port 3. Now the rest of this information, I'm going to fill in by clicking on Auto Configure, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do that. And voila, you see all the settings were set. You can see it's 19.2, it's CRC, it's a slick uh, micro panel view type device. And so all that was set for me. Now if that doesn't work for you, one of two things could be happening. It could be bad hardware, like a bad port on your micro, or a bad cable. Or number two, your micro may be one of those newer Micrologix 1000s that support the DH45. And if that's the case, there's really no way to get around getting a DH45 cable to connect up to it. So, um, but hopefully it'll work like this almost always does. The cables and the ports very rarely go bad. So that, that should work uh, without issue. We'll go ahead and click on OK. And then we'll click on Close. And then we'll double click on the new driver, ABDF1-1. And hey, look, there's our Micrologix 1000. Came right up. All right, so that's the first half. Now we got to create a uh, simple program and download it to the Micrologix 1000. Now you can see I'm opening up RS Logix 500. Um, you don't need to use that. You know, I talked about this in a previous episode. You can use the free RS Logix Micro Starter Lite software, which I also show you how to get in a previous episode. So check those out if you haven't seen them. Um, we're just going to go to File, New. Here, I'm going to search for the Micrologix 1000. There it is. I'm going to choose the base model and click on OK. And now here, I'm just going to quickly enter in some test ladder logic. Feel free to pause the video if you want. But um, if, you, if you need to learn ladder logic from scratch, I'm not going to teach that in this short, short Automation Minute episode. That's why my, uh, that's why my courses are, are out there and exist. So here we're just going to do, um, we're going to start with an XIO. We'll use T4 colon 0 slash done. And then we'll start a branch here with a TON for T4 colon 0. And we'll use a one second time base with a preset of 1000 and an accumulate a 0. Moving on to the next branch, we will put a move in there to move that timer's accumulate value to our outputs. And we'll end the branch. And press enter. And we'll click on verify project to make sure that's all valid. Good, it is. So now let me show you how to download this. Now a lot of people gravitate to this drop down. Don't. Because unless you've already set up a driver, it ain't going to work. So I've had people actually call screaming, why doesn't this stuff work? Well, you never set up a driver. So always use comms system comms. That will give you an RS2 so you can browse the network and actually choose the PLC you want to download to, right? So we'll select our Micrologix 1000, we'll click on download, and yeah, we'll save our program as untitled. I already have an untitled, yes, overwrite it. And now it's saying, hey, um, the Micrologix 1000 actually, uh, that you're downloading to, actually supports DH45 and um, the half duplex slave. Well, I don't care. That's fine. We're going to download to it anyways. Oh, and it's also telling us the name of the program that's already in there, but it's just a junk program, so I'm going to overwrite it. Okay, here we're downloading across our serial connection. And now it's saying, hey, your program def is defaulted to 9600 board, but you're already communicating at 19200. Do you want to really want to change the board rate in your processor? No way. Do not apply that. 
I uh, I should have changed it to 192, but I didn't, so I'm not going to apply that that change from my program to the controller. Okay, now it's saying, hey, you want to go online? Sure. All right, well, let's put this puppy into run mode. Yes, I do. And now we can hear the relays clicking on and off as the outputs uh, change based on the accumulate value of our timer. We'll go to the outputs here and let's zoom this in. And you can see those outputs turning on and off. And I don't know if you can see the LEDs from where you are on the controller, but they should match what you're seeing on the screen here. And so now let's go ahead and put it into the program mode. And that's it. That's how easy it is to set up communications to your Micrologix 1000 to create a test program inside of RS Logix and download it to the Micrologix 1000. And if you like that and you would like to learn all about programming the Micrologix line, which in turn will help you with the Slick 500 line because they're almost identical, check out one of my courses over at theautomationschool.com. PLC Basics Second Edition is the newest course. It's nearly five hours in length. And right now it's on sale for less than a video game. So check that out. Um, it's highly rated. I think it's running about 4.8 out of 5 stars right now. Got uh, students in over 45 countries. Um, but for those of you who are on a budget and, you know, 50, 60 bucks may be too much, I've also re-released my PLC Core Basics course. Now that's a two-hour uh, version of my original Kickstarter course. So it's an older course, but it's still it's a great value. Again, that's highly rated as well. I think it's running about 4.7 right now out of 5 stars. But uh, for those who are on a really tight budget and you're just not going to be able to get up to the $55, $60 mark, check out that. Right now it's on sale for less than $20. So and when you buy these courses at theautomationschool.com, you also get support. And now you get a free file download bundle. So buy the whether it's DVD or, or digital, you'll get a, a link to download the files I use in the course, the presentations as PDFs, and the uh, actual program files I use in the course, you get those free as well, as well as support from me up at theautomationschool.com. And with that, that's the end of this show. If you found this show helpful and you want to support the show, you can for as little as $3 a month, and you'll get $10 worth of free downloads, including up to five episodes of the Automation Minute every month. Again, for as little as $3 a month. And with that, that's the end of this episode. Until next time, peace.